if you guys want to turn off your cameras, if your camera's already on, I can't see. Recording in progress. Got it. Thank you, Zoom. Are we good? We can see the transcript. We're good. Okay. Awesome. So um, I guess we'll formally introduce ourselves. My name is Sophia Polomonakos. I am currently a fourth year student studying political science with a minor in sociology and music history. We thought since this is a mental health presentation, we would provide a mindfulness tip. So uh, my mindfulness tip is music, but more specifically, playing a song that brings you comfort on repeat for hours. I have no idea why it works, but it works wonders for me. Um, I do also want to mention that my socials are above with my Instagram and my email if you guys want to get into contact with me. Josh will also be on his, but he'll mention that when we get there. <laughs> exactly. And welcome to anybody who's tuning in right now. We're just at the introduction phase, so you haven't missed much, so don't worry. Um, well, my name is Joshua DeJesus. I'm going into my fifth year doing a specialist in mathematics and philosophy. Here is a picture of me and my grandfather when I was very young. The reason why Sophia and I put pictures of ourselves when we were young is because we truly believe that to have discussions about mental health and to have discussions about accessibility, we have to be in a state of vulnerability. And what better way to be vulnerable as a community if your leaders, your presenters are being vulnerable. So here we are in our cute baby fix. Um, my wellness tip is that wellness can be complicated at times. So my tip is to surround yourself with a community. I made the best choice with St. Mike's because we have the best community spirit. And that's something that not just I believe, but that many people at St. Mike's believe also. As Sophia said, we have our social medias up. So I have my Facebook, she has her Insta. Please reach out to us. We'd love to, you know, chat with you, to have conversations with you, and just to be friends. So there is, there are many, many, many resources that are available to you, and we will go through them today. But I thought we would focus in, zero in on three resources, not because they're, uh, you know, necessarily uh, more important, but simply because they're a little more all-encompassing, meaning you can reach out to these resources if you need absolutely anything. Um, so I do ask that you can pull out your, your smartphones if possible, because it will be a little bit interactive, these next few slides. So if you could all pull out your smartphones, that'd be awesome. So three resources that we're going to look at. Uh, the first one is going to be Good to Talk. It is a resource that you can access if you're living in Ontario. Then there's MySSP. That's a U of T wide resource. You can access that if you're living inside North America or outside North America. So very accessible. I noticed in our icebreaker, we were tuning in from everywhere, right? So MySSP might be something you can use before you maybe make your way over onto campus. And then the other one is the mental health portal. And we're gonna look through all this. Good to talk. So good to talk. Um, it suggests, as it suggests, it's an opportunity for you to talk with somebody, but also to text somebody. So before I go into that, if you scan this QR code with your smartphone, you'll be brought to the good to talk website. And on there, you'll have all the information about what, is, what this resource is, how it can help you, and how you can access it. So like I said, Good to Talk is both a phone line and a text crisis line. If you're living in Ontario, you can access this. You can call in the number on the left, and you'll be met with somebody 24-7 to talk about absolutely anything. I myself reached out to Good to Talk this past year, and I found them very receptive, very wholesome, and very helpful. We talked for like an hour and a half. It was fantastic. Um, and then the text crisis line is another resource. Sometimes, sometimes when you're reaching out about difficult things, you don't want to put word to it. You just want to write it out. That's cool. We have that available. You can text this line here, and uh, you can just have this conversation with them over text, again, 24-7, 365 days a year. The FAQ page will address more than I can do in this time. So there are very interesting points. For example, um, if you're a person who's concerned if this information will show up on your phone bill, for example, because you want to keep things confidential, they will answer that. It's completely confidential. Maybe you have questions about what help they can provide. All of that's provided on the FAQ list. Please check it out by going to the QR code. Again, if you can't get to it for some reason, 
then um, hold off. And then at the end of this, all these slides are already available to you. You can check it out. The next one is MySSP. Again, we have the QR code on the left. MySSP is again, a U of T wide resource available to students living within and outside of North America. Um, you can call either of these numbers. The first one is if you're living inside North America. The second one, if, you, if you're living outside North America. My SSP is yet another 24 seven resource. However, they are a little bit more accommodating in the sense that I noticed that we're coming from all parts of the world. Maybe English isn't your first language. Maybe that's not the way you typically discuss difficult topics. Totally okay. My SSP has 146 languages that they can service you with and 35 languages immediately in, in an emergency situation, including Chinese, English, French, and Spanish. So I guarantee you that this resource will be able to accommodate you and to service you in whatever it is that you could possibly need. Lastly, we have our mental health portal. Now I wonder how successful I'll be in navigating to it. So let's see how it goes. It's going. Can we all see the mental health portal on my screen? Awesome. So this is what it looks like. It's uh, again, the, the link is up in the, up in the top, mentalhealth.utoronto.ca. And what is this? Well, this is kind of like a hub of wellness. It's like, you just feel the wellness coming upon you. And um, on the right, we have the MySSP, which is what I just spoke about. It kind of goes through and it explains a little bit about the background about mental health about how to maybe judge your own mental health. There's also plenty of resources. So for example, um, exam jams and yoga sessions, all available on here. If you keep scrolling through, even if you're attending different campuses, let's say you're maybe going to a different course on a different campus, there is campus specific resources. Absolutely everything is here. So more than I can get into just in this conversation, but please make use of these three resources. Again, the QR codes are all there, the links are all there. You can access them and I recommend you do. And I recommend you also bookmark them because one thing students will constantly do, I'll explain this as I navigate back, um, is that they might think that, oh, maybe I don't need that resource. Well, you may need that resource and it's better to have that information available to you um, from the onset rather than um, later, sorry, just trying to get back here. Lots of links. We are back in action. I think we're back in action. Can we see this? We can see it. We're going to keep going. Here we go. So the next thing we wanted to go through was accessibility services and what exactly that looks like at U of T, what the process is like, and honestly, just what even are accessibility services in, at U of T. So just to start with some quick FAQs to get us acquainted with what this service even is, accessibility services essentially assist in navigated disability related barriers that you may encounter while at UFT. They provide support, problem solving for issues you may have, and also really narrow in on your inclusion in learning, but also who should register with accessibility services. Super important. Um, Long-term disabilities is most likely like well, I guess not most likely, but more often when people register with accessibility services, that looks like mental health concerns, learning disabilities, um, sort of chronic illnesses, things like that, but also short-term disabilities. If you're at U of T and you get a concussion or you break your arm, you may not be able to write your exams, write your tests, do your assignments. So accessibility services is also there to help you with whatever you pretty much may face while you're here, but also why should you register with accessibility services? It is required you, when, that you register accessibility services in order to get academic accommodations, but also it facilitates the ability for you to get those accommodations. They talk to your teachers, they provide you with support, they provide you with assistance on and off campus. So they're a really useful service and we'll get into it on the next slide, but we're gonna talk about how you essentially go about enrolling with accessibility services. 
So registering, there are three key steps. It seems kind of like a long process, but it can be broken down into these three steps, which is completing your certificate of disability, completing your student intake form, and finally meeting with your advisor to talk about your accommodations. What is a certificate of disability? A certificate of disability is a, it's a documentation form filled out by a medical practitioner that lets the university know exactly why you need accommodations. These forms have to be filled out by a medical practitioner. There is no other option. You cannot fill them out solely on your own. Um, and basically it's, a, it's kind of a long document, but once you get it to your doctor, to your therapist, whoever it may be, they will take it from there. Each of the pages are separated into certain categories like mental health, learning disabilities, chronic health, and your doctor will fill out exactly what you need in accordance like for the yeah. yeah, no, I think yeah. um, this point about filling out documents is very important. And actually, um, later on, we're going to hear from our wellness counselor speaking about that very point. So, um, yeah, I think that's a good point, Sophia. The next thing uh, you will be doing is your student intake form, which essentially is a 30 minute quiz type document which will ask you personal questions about what you need help with at U of T. This, this form essentially what it does is it helps you okay. It helps um, you navigate the resource, right? The accommodation that you might need. Is that correct, Sophia? Yeah, so essentially at U of at, St. Mike's especially, they have a bunch of different advisors over a range of topics, like we mentioned before, mental health, learning disabilities, chronic health, you know what I'm saying. And each advisor specializes in different things. So when you take this quiz, you will essentially be paired with the advisor that is best for you. Super important in the corner, it says the deadline for accessibility, both your student intake form and your certificate of disability are both due July 14. So just keep that date in mind if you want to get these um, accommodations in time for September, that is when they need to be done by. And let's all keep in mind today is July 3rd. So that means that this yes. is a fast approaching deadline. So please um, make use of these of this information we're sharing so you can be proactive rather than reactive when you join the university. And finally, meeting with your advisor. Um, everybody has different needs and this conversation will allow your advisor to provide you with the best help. Usually the first time you meet your advisor, the meeting goes for about an hour and they will essentially ask you why you came to accessibility, how your academic performance is affected by your disability, how you're managing, and also what accommodations you think will best help you. But they will also provide accommodations that they think will help you. Common accommodations are um, volunteer note takers if you struggle with um, if your disability hinders you from going to class, maybe you had trouble focusing, you can register with note taking. There's also test accommodations, extension on, um, um, extensions on assignments. So just whatever you may need, they'll be able to provide it for you. Also on the next slide, if you wanna just move it on to it. <laughs> um, this is an email that I drafted for you to send to accessibility services. Um, essentially, it just says that you've finished your forms and you would like to meet with your advisor. You should get your advisor name once you do your student intake form. So you can provide their name, give your availability, and hopefully you'll heal back super soon and you can just meet with your advisor and get your accommodations in place. I think Sophia was great at providing this email, right? Because sometimes when you're having these discussions, it's hard to put words to paper, right? So Sophia provided, what you, provided you with this template. You can fill it in, you can modify, you can do whatever you'd like, but please make use of this template as well when you're making that initial communication. Okay, so Saint, we've talked about resources, we've talked about forms, but what does wellness look like at St. Mike's? Well, it looks like people, right? Some really awesome people, people who are in the administration, people who are students and staff members. So I thought it would be important for us to meet these incredible people. Who are they? Uh, so the first person is Nicole LeBlanc. She's our wellness counselor. 
She is the person that you're going to reach out to for absolutely anything to do with your wellness. You can reach her either directly at this email or by calling her, or if you come to, to the registrar's office, they will refer you over. You can say, hey, I heard a lot about Nicole. I would like to talk with her and they'll book that appointment for you. The second person is Evangeline Cowley. She's the SMICSU VP Mental Health and Accessibility Rep. What's SMICSU? SMICSU is the St. Mike Students Union. They're your representative on campus. Now Evangeline is not a therapist but she is an advocate for your wellness and your, and your needs of wellness. And she's the type of person you can come to, to just have a chat about getting involved or maybe doing some work on campus that's wellness related. And then there's me. <laughs> I am the St. Mike's Wellness President. And uh, at St. Mike's Wellness, we, uh, we advocate for all the forms of wellness and we plan initiatives throughout the year like social cafes and workshops, et cetera to allow for wellness to be a focal point of your university experience. So now we're gonna hear from Nicole. Please give me a thumbs up if you can hear the audio. Hi, I'm Nicole LeBlanc and I'm the wellness counselor at St. Mike's. I'm here to offer counseling for St. Mike's students and residents. And I work with students who come to me with all sorts of concerns or questions. So sometimes that includes things like a difficult transition to U of T, which is very common. Some people experience highs and lows like anxiety and stress or sadness and procrastination that affects their academics. But people can also come to me with concerns that they've had from before or hopes to figure certain things out or get a clearer vision for the future. Whatever it is, I'd be happy to meet with you and speak with you. And if I don't think I can help you or I don't seem like the right fit I'm really happy to steer you in the right direction and recommend different resources. Uh, the way to get in touch with me is simply to email me at nicolem.leblanc at utoronto.ca and we'll set something up. Um, if I could just give a word of advice for first year students, I would definitely suggest that you make sure to try to access the resources earlier than later because I've had a number of students who come to me in third or fourth year and they sort of regret that they didn't know about the resources or they didn't, they didn't connect with them sooner. And then they, they sort of have a transcript that's been affected by it. So first and foremost, I would say, make sure you have a family doctor in Toronto. If you don't already have one, I would really recommend that you go to health and wellness and sign up with a family doctor so that should you ever need a doctor's note if you get sick or should you ever need a doctor to help you sign up for accessibility, you have that connection. Uh, it's also really good to know the learning strategies, to your registrar, and of course, get in touch with me if you ever think um, there's something that you, you wanna to talk to a professional about. Well, I hope you have a great transition to U of T this year, and hopefully it's in person, and enjoy the rest of your summer. Take care. Big thank you to Nicole for taking that time to make that video. Um, as you can see here, this is two times that we're talking about the importance of a doctor. And Nicole just told you exactly how to get one if you're not a person li already living in the GTA with a family doctor. So please seek that out as soon as possible uh, for all the different forms and also just for your own health. The next person we're going to meet is, e is Evangeline. Um, and again, she's the mental health and accessibility rep. Um, and here we are. Hello everyone, my name is Evangeline Cowie and I'm this year's St. Michael's College Student Union's VP of Mental Health and Accessibility. I am so excited for everyone to come on campus and I hope that you have an amazing and fulfilling orientation week. Orientation week remains to this day to be one of my most memorable university experiences as I met a great amount of friends and it really did help me navigate my new community. The role of VP of Mental Health and Accessibility at the St. Michael's College Student Union is focused on promoting, increasing the visibility and constantly improving mental health and accessibility resources in collaboration with other members of the student union, with other clubs and other student leaders, as well as members of the administration. This is actually a new role on the student union, so I'm super excited to work alongside the many other students and members of the administration that are driven by the desire to promote mental health and wellness. Something that I think is crucial in any university career is prioritizing your wellness. I believe that in order to succeed academically, it is important to ensure that you are thinking of you and that you are receiving the help and support that you need from the college. Something that I have found beneficial in navigating the St. Mike's community is getting involved. 
Joining clubs and finding opportunities for leadership and participation have been crucial to my own wellness, huge amount of support around me, and truly feel part of the St. Mike's community after having gotten involved. Mental health and accessibility concerns are can be difficult to tackle, but the college is driven to ensure that resources are readily available and that student leaders and members of the administration are always taking your, your needs and your opinions into consideration. I believe that everyone needs support and my goal in this new role is to ensure that this support is easy to find and is accessible. I hope that you have an amazing orientation week and please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me on any platform. I will be happy to answer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Evangeline. Um, so as you can see on the board, uh, there are there, all of her information is here, her email, Facebook and Instagram. So follow her, like her, uh, email her, reach out and, uh, and, and try to get involved with the student union. And next is me. I thought about making a video, but then I'm like, ah, that's okay. I'm right here already. Uh, so I, again, I'm the president of St. Mike's Wellness. I actually work very closely with both Evangeline and Nicole to try to bring wellness to U of T. We, uh, we have a whole array of, uh, of initiatives that we run to try to um, advocate for wellness through action for all of you students. Um, we have the Basil's Cafe, which is a social hour that we run on a weekly basis. We're, we're, we're going to be running workshops and a whole bunch of other initiatives. So please reach out to us if you're interested in just being part of this community or in doing this kind of work. We would love to have you a part of our team. I put all of our info here, our club email, our club website, and our social media. And um, oh, and this is great too. So we don't uh, focus in just on one form of wellness. We like to look at the, the, all the different types of wellness, whether it be physical wellness, mental wellness, spiritual wellness. And we think it's important because as one of the participants mentioned in the chat, so many people um, over, oversee or, or perhaps um, disregard the importance of mental health, disregard the importance of these kinds of discussions. And rather than wait till it's too late, how about you engage in that? Because it's really a great opportunity to build community and to build friendships. Okay, so we wanted to um, leave you guys with some additional resources that we may not have talked about in depth in this presentation. Um, these are all available on campus. These are specifically campus resources. And one we really wanna highlight is Campus Police and Travel Safer. Um, these services are essentially, you know, we go to school downtown, it gets dark, it gets kind of spooky. So if you're, if you have a late class and you don't feel the most safe walking around at night, you can call campus police and a male and female escort will come to you and take you wherever you need to go. Say it's residence, say it's the bus stop, say it's the subway, anywhere you need to go, they will take you. I don't know if Josh wants to add a little bit more to that. No, I think that's exactly it. And, you know, I think I've heard already some students say that they opt out of late classes because they feel uncomfortable. And of course, I get it. It's, it's a big city. It's, it's nerve wracking. But feel, please rest assured there are the resources on campus. You'll have the buddy system going on. I recommend the buddy system, by the way, in your classes to never walk alone, period. But also having these, um, these opportunities through Travel Safer, the number at the bottom of your screen. Another uh, center that I'd like to make note of is the Sexual Violence Prevention and Support Center. We have heard directly from their office multiple times um, in training for orientation weeks, and they're really great people. And the kind of work that they address is sometimes the types of things that we don't always like to bring to the surface and seek help on. But please reach out to them if you do feel that you need their help. And, and I, I promise you that they're going to be a really great resource for you. So we talked about campus resources. Those are all resources that are affiliated with the University of Toronto. These resources are just based in Toronto. So they don't exfiliate themselves with U of T per se. Um, we talked about Good to Talk, which you know Josh mentioned before, super great service. We also talk, uh, CAMH is also a great one. And also the, we have lots of helplines, youth lines, shelters, centers, things like that. It's just anything you may need. Uh, I do want to mention that a lot of students at the University of Toronto 
go to these places, not just for help, but to also volunteer. If Josh wants to talk more about that, he seems to know a little more than I do. CAMH is like linked almost to the University of Toronto, like the building is right there, they have one right on. So many students at U of T will take internships and volunteer opportunities at CAMH. And that's true throughout. I, I even know there's one member of St. Mike's Wellness who's actually um, a person who volunteers at one of the call-in centers. So these are not just resources for yourself, but also for you to volunteer at. Something else and also is I, I highly recommend you being knowledge about these resources for your own wellness, but also recognize that when you know about this stuff, the people around you are better off, right? So again, these are all going to be provided for you in the slides already at the beginning of the presentation and also at the end. So please save them on your phone. And if you need them or maybe your friends or the people in your classes or social groups or clubs, they need this kind of help. Make that, make that reference, right? Make that referral. And I'm telling you, you're gonna make the environment around you such a better place because of it. So yeah, it's us again. Um, we wanted to re-put our socials, my Instagram, Josh's Facebook. In case any of you have questions, need a referral, or even just wanna chat, we're here. Please don't hesitate to reach out for us. Um, yeah, we would love to just provide help if you guys need it. And, and I think Sophia's point about referral is so important, right? When you reach out to us or to anybody, please don't ever expect that that individual is going to answer it all. Even Nicole, a registered wellness counselor said that even if she can't answer it, she will make that referral. So that's what we're all about here. We're all here to empower you with the necessary tools and resources for you to be better off. So thank you for taking this time again. I know it's the morning on a Saturday in the summer and here you are talking about mental health and accessibility, but I really appreciate it. I appreciate it for you to come and listen to us, but also I appreciate your proactiveness about your own well-being because that's already a good sign. So thank you for taking the time and uh, both Sophia and I are very grateful that you came and joined us today. And we now want to open it up to questions. So I know that we've had the anonymous form in the background. For those who maybe didn't hear about that anonymous form, let's make it unanonymous in the sense that we know about it now, but still anonymous. Um, it's in the chat. Um, I think uh, Sharopa just put it again in the chat. You can message in the form um, and then we'll be asked that question, or you can just, you can message yourself in the chat. If you feel comfortable, you can unmute your mic and share it with your beautiful voice. Whatever you'd like to do, keep in mind that it is being recorded, um, but um, we would like to hear from you if you feel comfortable. So questions away. Are there any questions on the, on the form? Nothing. Well, keep in mind that the, we can absolutely help about anything. It, whether it be about mental health and accessibility or just about some uncertainties about coming to campus. We are open ears and we're really just here to talk and to help you out in whatever way that we can. So there's a few questions here. One we have, can we go to accessibility services if we have test anxiety? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I can actually tell you the exact accommodations you'll, you'll get. I have um, accommodations for test anxiety. So um, you can go, you can talk to them. You can, you do, you still need to get it from your, your doctor. So you will need to get diagnosed with anxiety in order to get accommodations for test anxiety. But once you get that certificate of disability, you'll be able to go to your advisors. They will give you, there's pretty much two major accommodations you get with test anxiety which is extra time on tests and writing your tests alone. There is a place in the exam center. So the exam center is kind of where most of us write our exam. I don't know, I write, I'm a social science kid. I write most of my exams in the exam center. But in the exam center, um, there is a separate room where you will write your exams in your own little cubicle with your own little timer and you will write it away from everyone else. You'll get, I believe it's um, the most common one is an extra 15 minutes for every hour 
So um, if you, the test is two hours, you'll get two hours and 30 minutes. You know what I mean? So um, yes, you absolutely can get accommodations for test anxiety. It's probably the most common one. And yeah, that, that's what I have to say on that. I think I'll quickly tie into a question that was put in here and then we'll come back to Joseph's questions. Um, so there was a question here, how would you react to a student's concern for another? Lovingly, first of all. Um, and, and secondly, um, being informed, right? If you're concerned about somebody else, um, try to seek out the resource that so you can make that reference. If it's something that's a big concern, try to reach out to somebody. If you're living on campus, maybe it's your dom. If you're if you're in a class environment, maybe it's your professor. Um, if you're at St. Mike's and you just want to get that extra help, we have our assistant dean, um, Emma Graham, who's an incredible resource for that. And I see Sienna wants to make a comment about that. I love it, Josh. I totally agree with you. I just wanted to add that you want to be really mindful of that person's comfortability and that person's privacy. And so most importantly, you can talk to them, refer them to resources, refer them to their Don, refer them to Nicole, to Emma, but you wanna make sure that they are the one who is deciding to take that step to contact that person. It's really important that they are in control and they have that autonomy to make that decision for themselves. Yes, Bob, I see your hand is up, please share. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. It's, it's a difficult balance uh, from care or caring and um, um, uh, personal intrusion. It, it, it's, it, it's very difficult. It, it, the, the person may be in a very difficult state and possibly somebody needs to do something, but you're in, it, it, it's, it's a difficult place to go sometimes. Legally. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think you're right, Bob. And, and uh, unfortunately, your, your audio did get a little muffled there, but I, I think I, you're right. And it's not always easy having these discussions, right? And, but they're important um, regardless, right? So reaching out and, and building that friendship, building that connection of trust is so important, right? Um, and, um, and as Sienna said, just being sensitive to the concern and the well-being of the other. Is so is so important. Uh, Joseph, what else do we got on that form? Thank you very much, Bob, for speaking up. That's awesome. For sure. The next kind of question we have here is asking about, um, you guys mentioned a buddy system. Is there any like, more information on that front? So a really great, a really great idea that I got in, in my first year was this. Um, and I think it was, I think it was uh, our former principal who told us this. So the idea is this, you sit in your lecture hall, right? And Wherever you sit the first day, keep that as your regular seat. Because what will start to happen is then the people around you will be the same types of people. And then you will slowly start to build that buddy system, that connection with them. When I was mentioning the buddy system, I was talking about safety on campus. But the buddy system is about everything. The buddy system is also just about friendships and building community. So that's one way to build the buddy system when you're in a lecture hall right, um, to maybe, you know, make that walk um, early in the morning or, or late at night with a friend. Or if you're heading off to a, to a club event or a club social, go with a friend, right, or, or leave with a friend. That kind of thing honestly is great because it promotes your own social well-being while also your own safety. Another question in the chat is, could you please share some more information about resources for international students. Sophia, do you want to mention something about that? Or I have some things to say too, but. Do you want to, do you want to start and I'll, I'll, I'll No, play. no, please go, please. I, I, I've already been speaking. <laughs> I, could you start? Okay, I can start, sure. <laughs> um, there is, so the number one resource was MySSP, right? It's available to you. You can call in and outside North America. The only exception is if maybe you're living on the moon, perhaps that connection won't work. But absolutely anywhere else in the world, you'll get that connection and they'll speak your language, almost guaranteed, 146 languages. So anywhere on earth, you can make that phone call. Um, that's for international students. Um, in addition to that, reaching out to wellness, reaching out to the registrar's office is fantastic. They're there for domestic and international students. 
Anything you want to add to that, Sophia, or we can move on to the next one? I, w I was going to say um, something we didn't talk about too much in this presentation, but I think is also really important for international students is um, the, the cultural clubs we have on campus that can sort of support you in sort of whatever cultural aspect you are a part of. So um, you might not even like the sort of support that you can get from people like you, that's also, I think, something that's super, super important. Uh, we will have lots of, um, we will have a presentation on clubs. If you guys, we do have a presentation on clubs, right? I'm like, mm -hmm. five, I'm like 10% sure we do. We'll but, also yeah, we do. have okay. a club there. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a club. Yeah, we also have a club. So yeah. um, resources like that, I think are also super important for international students. If you're here, if you're staying in your home country, I just think that's something super important to note. Yeah, and just one more thing to add quickly. Um, if you are an international student, know that you're not the only international student. There's others as well. Maybe coming from nearby, maybe not. But the international students are so welcomed in, in our U of T community and, and in Toronto in general. So I guarantee that you will find ways to become comfortable with, with our campus and to become comfortable with our resources. Joseph, anything else? Yes, there are a bunch of questions here. Um, the next one here is, um, if we are not yet um, diagnosed with a disability, for example, anxiety or depression, do we go through our family doctor to get a diagnosis um, and fill out the certificate of disability? Yes, you, so here's the thing. U of T will not provide you with accommodations until a med, I'm, I'm gonna say medical practitioner. I'm not gonna just say doctor because if it's also like a therapist, a psychiatrist, people like that can also fill out your certificate of disability. So you may not be um, like if you have if you have a therapist, if you have someone around you, uh, just like some uh, licensed professional who can diagnose you. That is what you need. You you of T will not authorize your accommodations without it. So you have to go through the process of getting a diagnosis first, and then all your accommodations will just follow suit. I, I hope that makes sense. I also just want to add that those types of, of, of disabilities um, are very important that you get this accessibility forming because um, you know when you have them they they may they may be sporadic right they might not happen all the time and having to go every single time to get the doctor's note to talk to the professor to figure out the comment is so complicated rather than doing that filling out this accessibility form as soon as possible will just ease that transition so that let's say you you know the the disability that you have isn't all the time isn't always recurring you'll always know okay you know what this happened the night before my exam I'm covered I have the accessibility form in my professor knows what I'm going through and I'm taking the proactive step and it's already done right rather than the other way where you might be scrambling for that doctor's note or to book that appointment as soon as possible um, this is yet another way to add wellness to your experience. Joseph. Yes. Um, so the next one's another question right here from Sharopa. Um, so first is specific to Sophia. So um, the person asking saying great job to you both. Um, but in terms of the test anxiety services, um, has there ever been any struggles, setbacks or stigma that you faced? Should, um, a person asking is worried oh. about kind of the, um, the latter from like professors and classmates. So one thing I will mention to you is that your professors are not allowed to not provide your accommodations. They're not allowed to do that. And if they do do that, you can go mess things up. That is not, okay, maybe don't go mess things up. But like, you're allowed to fight those things. You, your professor has, like, if you have your form and you say, these are my accommodations, I need them. And they say, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You go, you fight those things. In terms of setbacks, I don't think I've faced any particularly tests. Uh, testing services have been very good for me. Um, I find them super, super helpful. I, you know, for me, it's, I just, I, tests are just, there's a big no. So being in sort of that, <laughs> being in sort of that space where it's just me and I can just focus on myself rather than seeing everyone else around me, it's super helpful to me. Also, one thing I find is having the time in front of me, I like, especially when you're sitting in a big room, you can't see the clock. You have no, how, you have no idea how much time you have. So just being able to pace yourself and time yourself, I find that also super helpful. So just in terms of setbacks, I have not faced any, but if you do, fight them. I am telling you, I, I, message me, I will help you fight them because I, 
I'm ready. I'm ready to go. <laughs> We're not doing that. And, and in addition, Sophia's amazing. Um, <laughs> in, in addition to that, too, you, you, there's also the, the advisor that you're you're associated with, right? So if there is that issue, that fighting them, it, you know, it takes of the form of shooting that email to your advisor and to take that conversation on. At the end of the day, if this is filed, the university is on your side. And, you know, there is no way to impede that, that service for you. So, yeah. Joseph. Yes. So the next question is, how can I sign up for the buddy system that you guys were talking about? Okay, so, so the it's, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, <laughs> we should mention, buddy system's not a service. So the buddy system's not a service. So the buddy system is just a good idea. So um, the buddy system is just like, you know, befriending somebody who, for example, takes the same subway route as you um, on the way home, or somebody who's living in your dorm who maybe has the same chem class or a nearby class at that time to walk to each other. So it's not like a system to sign up for necessarily. It's just something that I recommend you seek out in your own in your first year to build those friendships and to develop the buddy system. So not necessarily a club, but definitely an important part of a first year. Perfect. And then there's one more um, question here. It's how can I access the slideshow when the Zoom session ends? Yana. <laughs> Can you answer that? I believe question? it's on Quarkus. If Sienna wants to talk about yes. that, yes, yes. So all of you know that under when you register for Quarkus, there is a module that's called orientation structure, and under that there was the page that's for sign up. As of now, there's another page that says workshops, recordings, and slides. That's where you can find today's slides. And by Monday, you'll be able to find the recording and the FAQ that our wonderful marshals, Joseph and Shroba, will be putting together for you. Yes. C can we make a little point about that quickly for them? Um, well, what does that look like for these students if they do have some more questions? When, when, when will they be talking to Joseph and Shroba? How, how does that kind of session work for them? Perfect. So what's going to happen is our goal is that Monday by noon, the recording will be up. The FAQ will be up and the slides are already there. Therefore, by Wednesday at 9 p.m., you can log back on using this Zoom link to have a Q&A session with Joseph and Shroba and they will be answering any further questions that you have. Um, after you've thought about it a little bit more, they're there to also give you advice if you wanna just drop in and ask um, Joseph and Shroba some other questions that you have. We really want to make as many opportunities for you to be able to connect with upper year students and get their perspective before you get into university. I highly recommend it, A, because this is a great way to build those friendships. These are two amazing people, Joseph and Sharopa, and they're very well knowledge about St. Mike's and U of T. So I recommend g getting out there for that Q&A period and just having a chat. Maybe uh, uh, follow them on social media and be friend and chat with them on there too. So that's a great idea. Awesome. Is there anybody else who'd like to ask any questions? If you don't want to go through the trouble of that form, you can shoot it through the chat, unmute the mic. We are open to questions. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a Latin word. <laughs> it's funny. So I believe you, um, this particular participant um, was learning a particular language. And when I was taking, when I was in my second year, I took first year Portuguese. And my Portuguese professor called uh, Quirkus Quirks, <laughs> which I just thought was so funny. So <laughs> there you go. That's how you say Quirkus out loud and in a different language. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yes, it means oak tree. Sorry, I should have explained that. Marcus means oak tree since when? Even us instructors are constantly learning things. Sienna. I was going to say that that's why we also, it's also called acorn because acorns come from oak trees. 
That's why U of T is all about the branding, y'all. I didn't even Stop. know that. Are you serious? I'm serious. When I was in first year, we had a trivia, and the question was, what does what does Quirkus mean? And I was like, I'm sure it's the tree that has the acorns, but I couldn't remember the word oak tree, so we wrote down acorn tree. I did not know that. Anyways, I'm more knowledgeable about resources than I am about trees, so don't worry, y'all. <laughs> That's awesome. I see some Great. of us are funneling out. Totally good, no problem. You're more than welcome to get going whenever you feel like it. Um, I believe this session is planned to finish at 11. Is that correct, Sienna? Yes, but if so, we have no more questions, we can stop the recording now. Yes, that's a great idea. Okay, now let's do that.